Good morning and welcome to our service for Sunday, April the 18th. Our opening hymn this morning, All to Jesus I Surrender. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. 
When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your bed and be silent. Oh, offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when there are grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you've handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading this morning is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when He is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? May the words of my lips and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. What do you believe should be our greatest priority as a church? Which part of Scripture should be the first thing we proclaim. What part of the creed should ring in our ears unlike any other part? Should our greatest affirmation be that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary? Or should our priority be to talk about his many miracles, his healing of the blind, the sick, and the lame? Should our greatest affirmation be that he raised people from the dead? What about his ability to be a teacher? At the age of 12, he was found by Mary and Joseph teaching the teachers, who were all amazed at his knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. I believe all these things are important. As a matter of fact, I believe everything about our Lord is important and should be proclaimed at every opportunity. But for me personally, proclaiming that Jesus Christ is alive and through the Holy Spirit lives in our hearts and in our minds and in our very souls should be our greatest priority. It is necessary as Christians to passionately believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is the message of Easter, that Christ is risen, that he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He appeared to the eleven gathered in the locked upper room in fear of the Jews. He mysteriously appears in this minute. His first words are, peace be with you. And we are told that they were startled and terrified. And he questioned them on that. Why are you afraid? To help calm them down, he shows them his hands and his feet to prove that he is Jesus of Nazareth, their teacher, their friend, their Lord. Let us put ourselves just for a moment in their place. They are behind a locked door in fear of those who arrested, tried, convicted, and killed their leader, who would find them and kill each of them. For that reason alone, they are afraid when Jesus suddenly appears before them. They are most likely thinking, how did he get in? Did someone leave the door unlocked? Has he been followed? Yet Jesus asked, why are you afraid? 
This is the same question he asked the day in the boat on the stormy sea when they woke him. Why are you afraid? In the upper room that day, the impossible became possible. Something unreal became real. When he showed them his hands and feet, we are told, while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. Does that not sound like our generation? They were afraid to believe. They were afraid to have faith. They were afraid and confused. If we look at the events leading up to this moment, we can see why they were skeptical, doubtful, afraid, lacking faith. The priests and Pharisees had been after Jesus and anyone associated with him. Jesus had been betrayed by one of his own followers, a member of his small, small close-knit inner circle. People who had once rallied soon turned against them. Their leader had been executed while they had been denying him. Yet, out of nowhere, he appears before them inside a locked room. Strangely enough, after showing the wounds of his hands and his feet, he says, Have you anything to eat? Have you anything to eat? There was one way of proving to those present that he was truly alive. One of the most basic human needs, food, would prove that he was truly alive. In a hopeless scene, walk someone whom they never expected to see again. Someone who gave them not only joy, but hope. His resurrection confirmed their belief and faith in him. So where do we fit into this story? What part amazes us? Which parts fill us with joy? Which parts are too good to be true? Should hearing this story turn our lives around? Should the resurrection turn our lives around? Yes. The whole story should amaze us, fill us with joy, and turn our lives around. Knowing that Jesus fulfilled what was written thousands of years about him before he was born. That the Messiah was to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day should fill us with joy. But most importantly, it was also written long before his birth that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. You see, only through the cross of Calvary are our sins forgiven. Only through his resurrection do we have eternal life. If that is not reason enough to turn our lives around, if that is not reason enough to share this story, if that is not reason enough to have faith in him, then what is? Let us confess our Christian faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's intercession. In our worldwide Anglican prayer cycle, we pray for the Church of Ireland. In our diocesan prayer cycle, we pray for the parish of Tangier and for the retired clergy of the Eastern Shore region. 
In our DCS prayer cycle, we pray for old St. James's Earth Hill. We pray for the parish of Milton and Rustico, the Kings County Churches, the parish of St. Peter's Cathedral, and the parish of Wolf Island, Ontario. We pray for God's gift of health and healing for Nancy Rackham, Lloyd Ross, Gordy DL, Heather Curtis, Pat Willis, Carol McDonald, Jim Craig, Sylvia Moore, Helen Strilia. I stand amazed in the presence.
who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. Say. Mm-hmm.